Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about um, how to make a line graph or a bar graph in Google Sheets. The first thing we're going to talk about is, well, how do you even know which one you're supposed to be making in a situation? What should be included? And when I discuss that, I'm going to give you some memory tools that will work for any type of graph. Um, what kind of things that need to be included how to set up the data table within Sheets so that it's going to make a good graph, and then some common reasons for why when you highlight it and you're working on your own, why does it not work? Why does it look funny? Okay, there's some very common mistakes that kids make. So first of all, in order to know what type of graph to make, you have to know what kind of data you have. Um, there's two main types of data quantitative with an N and qualitative with an L. So quantitative are numerical datas, N, N. Things like length, height, dens density, volume, speed. Um, these are all different quantities. It's going to be number based. Qualitative data are qualities like color, texture, smell. Okay, uh, if you have a mixture, like some of your data is qualitative, meaning words, you're going to have to make a bar graph. When you have just quantitative data with an N, meaning numerical data, that's when you're going to be wanting to make a line graph or a scatter plot. If you're looking at percent of a whole, that's when you would make a pie graph. Um, this video is going to focus mostly on bar and line graphs. You can watch this video here where I take you through how to make a scatter plot. All right, so no matter what type of graph you're uh, making, you need to make sure you include these things. We've got an acronym here, TAILS. So if you think of the word TAILS, that will help you remember that we have to fix the title the axis, the intervals, the legend, and the scale in a graph. Okay, another memory tool. I love this one. I saw this on a kid's paper like 15 years ago, and I stared at it and stared at it. What is that? Why did the kid write that? And then it dawned on me, oh my gosh, it's brilliant. The dependent variable goes on the y-axis. We also call another word for the dependent variable is the responding variable. And here we've got the independent variable always goes on the x-axis of a graph. The independent variable has another name called the manipulated variable. So if you just think of this acronym, dry mix, it should help you remember where the dependent and independent variables should go on a graph. Okay, so here's it just written out dependent variable or responding variable on the y-axis. The manipulated or independent variable always goes on the x-axis. So the next thing we need to talk about is now that we're in Sheets, is how do you set up your data table so that you're most likely to get a good graph? All right, so you want to make sure that you have a good heading and that your unit is in the heading. It will not graph well if you write the units after each number. So for example, if you had 5 centimeters here, 11 centimeters here, the computer does not know how to handle that information because it's a mix of numbers and, and uh, letters. So you make sure you put your headings, your units just in your heading. Okay. The other thing that's going to help your graph come out well is that if you have your independent variable, I think I change here on the left side while Right next to it is my dependent variable, the data I collected. If there's stuff in between, it's not going to graph well. It's going to try to graph everything. But most times we just want to see the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. So you might need to put them side by side in order to get a good graph. There's a title there, and that's a good thing. However, we want to make sure that when we go to make the graph, we don't actually highlight the title. We want to only highlight the boxes that I need to in order to make the graph. You do want to highlight the headings because then it will autofill 
in that information for you when you make your graph. So here I've got this highlighted. I go insert chart. And there we go. I have, I'm going to look through my, my tails. Title, not good. So here's a better title. Um, we want things like the effect between blank and blank or the relationship between blank and blank where we have the independent and the dependent variable in the title. Okay, so that way we're describing what's happening in this graph. Okay, so titles are fine. T, A, all right, uh, A, are my axes set up right? Yes, they are. Here's my independent variable, and I have a unit there. I, my increments, are my increments set up correctly? They are. It happened to automatically make a good uh, increment. If it did not, then you would go, and, so you need to fold up this chart axis that was open. And so on my horizontal axis, I can change the minimum and the maximum. So instead of this going to 6, say I, I could change it to be 10. And see, now the, now my, my increments and my scale are, are way off. We want to make sure that um, we just go to the end of the data so that the graph takes up the space. Okay. Uh, if you accidentally e exit that menu before you're ready, you can always go back here to edit the chart again. T-A-I-L. I don't need a legend here. And we already talked about our scale. All right, let's look at a bar graph, okay? Again, I have, um, so see how this doesn't all fit? You can see up here, drag that to make it fit. A lot of times kids want to center their data, which you would do like that. And it makes it look a little bit better. Oops, this one shouldn't be centered or it comes off. There we go. And then sometimes you also want to put boxes in. So now I've got a very nice looking data table, my independent variables on the left, my dependent variables on the Y. So as long as I highlight things correctly, I should be able to go ahead and insert chart and it should look decent, except it made a pie graph. We don't want pie graph. Okay, so here it is. It's in the setup menu. The chart type, I don't want it to be a pie chart. I want a bar graph because I have a mix of quantitative data and qualitative data. So these qualities will go on the x-axis um, because that's something that I, the scientist, am controlling. I'm controlling what I'm going to look for, um, but I am not going through and changing people's hair color. Okay? So now I go through my list. Title, that needs to be fixed. It should be the relationship between blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Okay? Um, or the number of students with each type of hair color. It needs to be some sort of descriptor of what's in the graph. My axes are labeled. I don't need units in this situation. My increments are done automatically correctly. They're spaced out evenly. It's not going one and then four. L, I don't need a legend. S, and my scale looks good. Okay. I, sheets tends to fix scale and increments for you, but if you were doing it by hand, that would be something you would need to consider. All right, so um, as soon as you fix this, you would be ready to turn it in. Some kids have trouble with copying and pasting the graphs uh, into something else. One thing you can do is you can download it as a, like a PDF or as a um, picture, and then you can insert it from your download folder. Um, sometimes copying works from this menu. Sometimes Control-C works. But um, those are all options. <clears throat> so those are all options on how you can take your graph and put it wherever your teacher wants it to be.
Okay, so these are the things that we talked about today. I hope this video helped you and you now feel pretty confident in how to make either a line graph or a bar graph. If you need to make a scatter plot to check to see if there is a relationship between two variables, please check out this video where I go over how to do that. Bye-bye.